welcome to our channel, Frugal Queen in France. If you are here for the very first time, my name is Jane and I live with my husband, Michael, who is behind the camera. We are debt and mortgage free and we live off our occupational pensions and we share our thrifty and frugal life with you. So welcome to Midweek Money Chat and today we will be sharing 15 easy ways to reduce the costs of your home energy. So this week's Midweek Money Chat is in response to that huge hike in energy costs that some people are facing in the UK. Some people's tariffs that they had that were fixed tariffs, that were low fixed tariffs, have gone. Some energy companies in the UK have gone completely bust and those customers have been moved on to a very expensive tariff with other companies. In some cases, you know, in almost every case in the UK currently, the cheapest rate at the moment is twice the price of the cheapest rate of one year ago. So this week's Midweek Money Chat is in direct response to that. So let's look at 15 ways in which you can reduce your energy costs. Let's start off by thinking about gas central heating and we all know that that gas price in the UK has gone up. Let's go to the first one. If you can, take a look at your gas boiler, take a look at your thermostat and I want you to think to yourself, can I reduce it by one or two percent? It is advised to keep your house between 18 degrees centigrade and 22 degrees centigrade. Now, I'm sitting here right now, and as you can see, I've just got like a t-shirt on. Currently in my living room, and it is the end of September and it is warm. It is 21 degrees in here. And as you can see, I'm just in a t-shirt. If that temperature went down to 20, I wouldn't notice the difference. However, if it came down to 19, I wouldn't just be sitting here in a t-shirt, I might need to wrap up a bit. So there is the theory behind it. Can you turn your thermostat down by one or two degrees? By turning it down one or two degrees, you can reduce your bill by five to 10%. So that's the first thing. Take a look at your thermostat and ask yourselves if it's within your parameters of comfort. Can you turn it down by one or even two degrees? The next thing we're going to look at is the time in which you will have your central heating on. Now, most people will leave work at five, get home around 5.30, they want their central heating to be coming on as they are getting home. They will then have it on in the evening until maybe 9.30. So 5.30 to 9.30 is 240 minutes. If you want to reduce that by 10%, you're gonna reduce it by 24 minutes. Well, let's just make it easy. Switch your central heating on 15 minutes later. Turn your central heating off 15 minutes earlier, saving yourself another percentage. So you've turned it down by a couple of degrees, you're saving yourself five to 10%. You're turning it off 10% earlier. You're turning it on 10% later. That's another 10% savings. Would you notice a couple of degrees in temperature? Probably not. Would you notice 15 minutes less of heating in the evening? Probably not. As I said, if it's within your parameters of comfort, it is something that you could consider. Now, most people with gas central heating may have it on for the four hours in the evening. They may put it on for an hour in the morning, we often English people say, to take the chill off the house. 
So that gives you five hours of heating altogether. Could you completely go without, especially if you're rushing off to work, or you're rushing off or taking the children off to school or you're busy in the morning, could you actually go without that hour in the morning? You take that hour off in the morning that you do not put your heating on, you have saved yourself 20% of that heating bill for that entire day. As I've said, and I'm going to completely say this because this is not suitable for everyone, if that is in your parameters of comfort, that you can do without that hour in the morning, you will save yourself, if you have your heating on for five hours a day, 20% of your heating bill every day. So think about that one. Could you not switch your heating on for that hour in the morning? from experience here because from the 2018 until August this year all my work was in an office at home and over the winters you know when you're working from home it can be a bit cold so or you could be retired at home or you could be with your children at home so let's talk about some practical ways of dealing with that reduction of heat or reduction of expense because you may just not have the money to cope with those increases. So let's look at the first practical way. It's very tempting, if you're like me and you're retired, to get up and mooch about in your pyjamas. And you can get a bit chilly that way and think to yourself, oh, I'll just pop the heating on for an hour. Well, here is my best tip, and I stick by this in the winter, is to get up, Get in that shower that will warm you up pretty quick and get yourselves wrapped up warm before you even go down for breakfast. So get up, get yourself showered, get yourself wrapped up warm. First thing in the morning, you will keep the heat in your body. So there's the first tip. Get up, get showered quickly, get wrapped up warm first thing in the morning. <laughs> Now, keeping your energy costs down are easier if you're somebody who goes out of the house and off to work every day. But what if you're not? What if you're an at-home parent? What if you're an at-home worker? What if you're like us and you are retirees? What are you going to do? In the mornings, for example, and I'm just using my own circumstances as an example here, if you will. Those are the times in the mornings to get out get out, walk the dogs, get out and do some gardening work, get out and go and do some exercise, go out and about and do your errands, get off to the library, get off and do those things first thing in the morning. And when you are out of the house, getting that exercise or keeping yourself busy, that is the time you do not need to have the heating on. So if you can get out of the house as much as possible, whether it's to go and do errands or go and do the things you do, you are not having to heat the house at that time. And you are heating yourself because you are wrapped up nice and warm and you are keeping yourself busy. <laughs> talk about life in the UK and you really do need to make the most of the sunlight in the UK. You really do need to make the most of what we call the solar game. So when I was working from home, one thing that I did that really benefited me, it kept warm, it kept me warm and it cut down on my energy cost of lighting, is I put my desk right by the window. Now, one thing on our research that we found out when people were working from home a lot, a lot of people in the UK have a conservatory or some people would call it a sunroom. They move their office into there. Those sunrooms, those conservatories warm up wonderfully, especially in the winter sunlight. Sometimes people use these fantastic rooms as a day room. I know my, my much loved and departed mother-in-law would spend hours of her day in her little conservatory. It brought her great joy to be in there. She really enjoyed it. And it's a great place if you have children for them to play in in the daytime. It's a great place maybe you might put a TV in there. It's where you sit in the daytime. So make the most of the solar game. Make the most of that daylight. 
you won't be switching your heating on so much, you won't be using the lighting so much, and hey, everyone benefits from the sunlight. <laughs> I'm really sorry if I'm stating the obvious here or preaching to the choir, but sometimes we do have to think to ourselves in our own home, do we just have to wear a few more clothes? The secret are layers. The secret to comfort is layers. So those summer t-shirts, wear one underneath, stick yourself a long sleeve t-shirt over the top, maybe a fleece snood, maybe the fleece fingerless gloves that you can wear, stick a fleece jacket over the top. These are all things that you can keep an eye out for, either in the sales or in my case when I'm in the local charity shops. I often see these things. Now another piece of advice, and I have done this when working at home, if you are sitting at your desk and stick a fleece blanket over the back of your chair, it will give your back some warmth. And something else I absolutely swore by, especially when I was on a straight four to six hour shift at my desk, is to have a hot water bottle and put that at the base of my back on my chair and it really kept me warm. And something else as well in the evenings, and we do this all throughout the winter, is having a nice warm throw over the back of the sofa. So when you're sat there, you've got that extra layer of warmth at your back. Layer up, it'll save you so much money. Okay, let's talk hot water. Most people in the UK have an on-demand hot water system, either a nine kilowatt electric shower, which heats the water on demand, or a combination gas boiler, which again, heats the water on demand, both of which will have a heating setting for your water. Now, if you have a combination boiler and when you turn on the tap, it is so hot that you have to run the cold with it within the mixer tap so it doesn't burn you, you have got your water heating set too high. Take a look at your combination boiler, turn down the water thermostat so it is not so hot. You do not need to have it that hot. You're spending a lot of money, it will save you money just by turning the thermostat down on your water heater. It's exactly the same on that nine kilowatt electric shower. Turn it down, turn the temperature down so you can turn it on and it is the temperature that you like to wash with. people like to set their shower going so it warms itself up and then they get a bit distracted and go and do something else and the next thing you know not only has there been litres and litres and litres of water coming out of it but that combination boiler has been fired up hasn't it that nine and a half kilowatt electric shower has been burning electricity or burning gas got a hint for you don't turn on your electric shower or your shower at all until you're standing in front of it naked and it's a bit chilly in that bathroom that you've not heated in the morning. I tell you what, you'll soon get in there to warm up. You won't be wasting water, gas or electricity. I swear by this one, you just want to get in there. And the other part of it is, is if you like to have a radio on in the bathroom in the morning, and I always used to do this because I'd have my ear going like that, listening for the traffic warnings, which way to work, am I gonna to have to go a different way? I would link to, I think to myself, one song on the radio is about two to three minutes long. I need to get in there and out before this song on the radio has finished. Or a quick little shower timer, you can often pick those up in Poundland or the dollar store and get yourself in and out in a couple of minutes. It will save you money because the longer you are in there, the more gas and the more electricity you are using. Right, let's move into saving money in the kitchen. The thing in your kitchen that uses more energy than anything else at all, if you've got one, is your oven, your main oven. Whether you're using the gas or whether you're using your electricity, 
It's the one thing in your kitchen that uses the most energy and that costs the most. So you do you have anything, you know that thing you got for a wedding present or a Christmas present, or you picked it up at a car boot sale or a charity shop, that isn't hardwired in. Now in the UK and here in France, your cooker or your hob or your oven is hardwired in. It's not plugged in because it draws a huge amount of kilowatts. So do you have anything that directly plugs in? It's using so much less energy. Do you have a mini oven? Do you have an air fryer? Do you have a pressure cooker? And best of all, do you have a slow cooker? Think of any means possible of using anything that you have to cook with instead of your oven. If you have none of those things, think to yourself, can I make the cottage pie, the lasagna, the cook, the chicken and everything in the oven all in one go and fill it up? Then keep those meals in your fridge that you can just pop in the microwave and reheat that way. So please think about it, try and use your main big electric oven as little as you possibly can because if you have any other way of doing it, it will save you money. You know as Brits, we love a cup of tea. That kettle is on all day long and the kettle is drawing two to three kilowatts of energy. Watch your smart meter, put your kettle on and watch your smart meter. Woo! The electricity it draws is massive. So, if you have an electric kettle, flip the lid and only put one cup in or two cups in as you need it. Or, fill it up and fill up a flask with it. Stop using that electric kettle throughout the day. Think about that one before you use it because it's using a lot of energy. Something that Mike and I always did, especially when I was working and I was in the office, is I would fill up flasks. So I had have nice hot drinks to drink whilst I was working in my office. And we were not using the kettle all day because we were aware of the fact that it just makes our electricity bill go up. So a good thing to do, fill up your flask. Best of all, when you're making a cup of tea, only put in one cup full of water and try and use that electric kettle as little as you possibly can. So we're still looking at cooking, we're still looking at the kitchen. Something else in your kitchen that's drawing a massive amount of energy, you're having to use it all the time, is your electric hob. Now think about this, do you have any devices that you can use that are plug in? Not suggesting you go out and buy them specially, but you might see them on FreeCycle, you might see them on Marketplace for nothing, you might see them in a charity shop. Here's an example. Do you have that three tier electric steamer that's been sitting around that you haven't been using? Time to get it out and use it. It'll use a lot less electricity than your hob. However, if you do have an electric hob, you could maybe use your steamer pans. We used to have a three tier steamer pan, so I only used one hob. I'd have the potatoes in the bottom and two layers on top. I would have the vegetables. I would only use one ring on my hob. Can you reheat things in the microwave instead of using your hob? But be aware of the fact that that hob is using a lot of electricity and try and use it less. Let's talk laundry. Now the first one, now this isn't for everybody, but it's a really good tip. Do not wash clothes or anything else that isn't dirty. Look at it if it doesn't look dirty. Sniff it, smell it, it doesn't smell dirty. You can wear it again. What I used to do when I was going out to work is I'd often take clothes up, hang them up again, and wear them another time before I wash them, or maybe another time after that before I wash them. 
but I still wouldn't wear the same clothes day after day after day because I wouldn't want people thinking, hmm, you're not washing your clothes. So I'd hang them up and wear them again some other time. And each time I think to myself, it doesn't look dirty, it doesn't smell dirty, it's not, I can wear it again. There are other things that you can use again and again, and this is not for everybody, and I accept that. When we have a shower, we are clean. We hang up our towels to dry over the banister, warm air rises, they dry. We only wash our bed sheets once a week. Some clothes like jeans, we're at home, we've got gardening clothes, we put them on again, we wear them a couple of times. But if we've got jeans on, for example, outer clothing, that we might wear them all week and not wash them. So, like I said, it's not for everybody and I accept that, but give it a sniff, have a look at it. If it's not dirty, just don't wash it at all. Now, when it comes to doing your washing, take a look at your washing machine. Our washing machine is a front loader washing machine. We do most of our laundry now at 20 degrees, which is not much more than a cold wash, but we do it at 20 degrees. If I've got something like I get some cooking grease on an apron or a bit of tomato sauce or some clothing, I will spot clean. I will get those stains out first. So I might take my laundry liquid or I might take some washing up dishwash liquid and just rub it onto the stain to break it down and loosen it. Nothing wrong with soaking things in a bucket of salted water to loosen stains. So you therefore do not need to go washing things up hot temperatures. So quite simply, put things on a shorter wash. Here in our washing machines, they can those front loaders, they're designed to use less energy and do a longer wash. But does it have a quick wash? Does it have a short wash button? Can you reduce the temperature? Doing that, you will save money on those costs. It's really expensive to run a tumble dryer to dry your clothes. So, if you have a washing line, the best thing that you can do is to hang your washing out. And you might be saying to yourself, but it's winter time, Jane, winter's on the way. Keep an eye on the weather. If you can get it out on a good breeze, and we know it's really windy in the UK, sometimes you have to put about five pegs on a pair of pants to stop them blowing into your neighbor's garden. A good blowy day will have your washing dry in no time. Now I know some of you are living in areas where you are not allowed to have a washing line. If that is the case, check what it says on the covenant. Are you allowed to put a clothes airer discreetly out of sight to dry your washing on one of those, for example. So get your washing on the line as much as possible. If not, get it on a clothes area, maybe in a porch is a good place to put it. Maybe in your conservatory or your sunroom is a good place to stand it. Have the window open slightly, let the breeze come through to dry your washing. So if you do have to use your tumble dryer, you can use it a little bit less because it's expensive to run. And if you can use it less or not at all, it will save you money. Well, those were my 15 quick and easy tips to reduce your energy costs. It's inconclusive. I could have gone on for a much, much, much longer, but that's where I hand it over to you. I love it when you comment. Now, I want to know all the ways and leave a comment below of how you reduce your energy bill. Everything I've been talking about there has been very UK specific. Tell me, share with all of us, how do you keep your gas and your electricity bill as low as you can wherever you live? just leaves me to say if you have enjoyed this video it's really helpful and please go on 
give it a like. If you like all of the money saving tips and how we share our thrifty and food frugal life, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It just leaves me to say thank you so much to everybody who watches. Thank you so much to everybody who comments and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye for now.